They hear it all the time or they lose their mind. These are the world's greatest soccer players. Look, Pele. <sighs> Me and him. Another way in which we acknowledge the specialness of women is in women's sports. The European Championships. Coverage begins tomorrow morning at 9. There are many sports that men compete in that women simply can't do. Very crisp movement between the strength holds. In contrast, there's nothing that women can do that men can't. The only sports exclusive to women are sports that men choose not to do. Where they do compete in the same activity, women's performance is nothing like as good as men's. This can be due to inferior strength or lack of endurance, and sometimes it's insufficient speed or toughness. Men don't usually like to draw attention to this fact, because they don't want to seem petty, and it makes most men uncomfortable to discuss just how much better they are than women. Well, it doesn't make me uncomfortable at all. Swings high bar with the same confidence that a man would. Good release there. It has to be said, women do bring a certain something to sports, but it certainly isn't performance. We all saw and loved Kelly Holmes winning the 800 metres in the 2004 Olympics. Come on, Kelly! One more goal! Come on, Kelly Holmes! It's goal! Kelly's won the goal for Great Britain! What a race! It was fantastic the way this woman outran all those other women to win Olympic gold for Britain. She's gone on from this to massive fame and millionaire status. Good morning to you. Coming up on this morning's programme, Olympic champion Kelly Holmes. She's heading off to an awards ceremony today, a bit of pampering for the occasion. It's nice that Kelly's enjoying everything and, you know, going lots of places and doing lots of things. It's brilliant. Just... But it seems to me that there's a small issue we're overlooking, and it concerns time. Kelly Holmes runs really fast, for a woman. She won Olympic gold in a time of 1.56. And the world record time for the women's 800 metres is 1.53. But the qualifying time that a man must run to even be considered for Olympic selection is 1.47. A man must run faster than any woman in history just to have a chance of getting on the Olympic team. For a man to get even basic membership to a typical running club in the UK, he has to run at least 1.56 dead, faster than the Olympic gold medal winning performance of Kelly Holmes. What's going on? There are hundreds of male athletes in the UK holding down jobs while they train, struggling for recognition. They can run much faster than their female equivalents, but we don't know their names as we do Kelly Holmes or Paula Radcliffe, whose appearance fees alone for entering a race could be £50,000. There's a similar situation with the 100 metres event. Halle Aikin's IET is just 15. He's seriously quick. 10.5 seconds for the 100 metres. This 15-year-old boy can run faster than any woman in history. What does it say about women's athletics? when a child can outrun the best of them. When I did karate for a long time, there was a lot of women that did them, you know, and you pair off and you spar. Yeah, but you're, you don't want to get paired off. When I, I was a kid and I was doing karate, I got paired off against the woman who was a black belt to even off. If you're a man and you can't beat a woman, or you can't beat the smart kids, <laughs> you're no good. <laughs> yeah. The smart kids. I don't mean no disrespect. No, of course you, I know you yeah, don't. But yeah, but if you can't beat a woman in a sport as a man, yeah. so you're not any good. Now, <laughs> it's only in modern times that athletics ever split men and women. The events are always about how fast you could cover a distance, how high you could jump, or how far you could throw. The events were no respecter of size or build and certainly no respecter of sex. The men's javelin weighs 800 grams compared to the women's 600 gram implement. The hammer is a 7.26 kilogram ball. Women use a lighter 4 kilogram ball. The hammer weighs less, the javelin is lighter, the shot put smaller, hurdles lower. I'm only surprised that races aren't made a little shorter to help them out. Well, actually, one of them is. Why do we have the 110 meter high hurdles for men and the 100 meter low hurdles for women? Why must men run farther and jump higher for their reward? If we place women's sports performance in context of actual achievement, we see this. Athletics events around the world pay women the same prize money as men, but the disabled athletes get far less money because their performances are not as good. But women's abilities are barely any better, and often worse, than male disabled athletes. If women are handicapped by their sex, as their performances demonstrate, they quite clearly belong in the Paralympics. Women's sports as a separate entity are not just unnecessary, but they're counterproductive 
because precious sport resources are allocated away from training the best athletes, who are men, to training mediocre athletes, who are women. I'll definitely be back and to prove to everyone that I'm still the best in the world, because I know that I can do it. For a woman, being the best in the world means that there are tens of millions of men and boys, disabled people, amateurs and part-timers that can all run faster than her. And that's all it means. Why do we celebrate mediocrity just because the performer is female? It's like giving Olympic gold medals for an egg and spoon race because the kids are cute and try really hard. Paula Radcliffe failed to finish the marathon in the Athens Olympics. Radcliffe stopped running in the marathon, sobbing and overwhelmed by defeat. Apparently Paula had not reckoned on it being hot in Greece in the summer. But she felt the need to explain herself to the nation. I'm hurting so much inside for myself. But I just feel like I've let everyone else down. But apparently it wasn't her fault. It was actually the fault of the Olympics. Well, you know, I'm almost beginning to think that the, the marathon isn't a summer sport. It shouldn't necessarily fit easily. It doesn't fit easily into the Olympic programme for the Summer Olympic Games. 26 miles is tough enough, let alone running it over a hill and, and, and hot, you know. But, you know, I feel for Paula. And here, one of the best players in the women's game. Oh, that's a terrible clearance. Oh, what a move by Jordan! Three to Russia. And look at Janeth turning this game around with her defense and against the veteran Baranova. If I want to watch school sports day standard sport, then I'll go to a school sports day but I'd rather not have it inflicted on me on Olympic grandstand. Of course, this is a bit strong. Women perform various sports to an impressive level. Also, there's a market for women's sports, and many people are happy to pay money and spend their time watching it. And this is good, but it's not the point. The point is that men perform these sports to a much higher level. It's that simple. And that's what the Olympics should be about, right? The highest level. My views on women's sport are not anti-woman. They're about sport itself, rather than women doing sport. I'd no more watch women's sports than I'd watch a grossly obese person doing gymnastics. It's not that I have something against grossly obese people. It's simply that the gymnastics wouldn't be very good. It's one of the insidious techniques of feminism that any criticism of women or any analysis of their behavior or abilities that's not wildly positive is regarded as hatred against women. Any criticism is misogyny. Not so. What concerns me in the field of sports is not really women's sports at all, but rather the neglect of genuine sporting achievement by men. In tennis, the man ranked 100 in the world, or even 1,000 in the world, would beat the top female players every time. But it's not their names that we know. The real fact is that if women competed against men, it would not be Kelly Holmes' Olympic gold medalist. It would be Kelly who? Or Kelly in last place? Or Kelly who didn't qualify for the Great Britain team? And it's not the case that women aren't allowed to compete against men. It's men who aren't allowed to compete with women. Women only seek to compete against men when they think they can win. At any other time, it's unfair. Her drive is regarded by many to be the most perfect action in golf. Her hero is Tiger Woods, and she believes one day she could beat him. Men and women should compete together in every sport, and the best man will win. And possibly the best woman will win on occasion. And then her victory would actually mean something. But of course, women are not interested in this flavour of equality. This article hit the news in 2004. Apparently, by the 2156 Olympics, women will run faster than men. I won't comment on this idea, because I suppose women need something to hope for. But I will say that the kinds of research that are receiving funding in our feminised institutions, the possibilities of women beating men physically, whether men will die out at some point, why girls are smarter than boys, etc. All of these are inherently misandric, and are not justified studies in their own right. The difference between men and women lies in the chromosomes. Whereas women possess two X-shaped sex chromosomes, men possess one X and one little Y-shaped chromosome. Apart from its role in determining maleness, the Y chromosome appears to be genetically inactive. Three times shorter than the X, and possessing only a few dozen genes compared to the 15,000 carried by the X, the Y chromosome is slowly decaying. A case in point would be Hitler scientists, who regularly and without fail reported what Hitler wanted to hear, that Jews and all others 
were biologically inferior to Aryans. Why is this going on in England today?